Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Survival Bat. Today is a very simple video. We are recapping our hike on the Appalachian Trail with the Red Baron and the wife. And uh, just kind of go over what they learned and maybe ask some Q&A questions. So stay tuned and it should be a good video. I didn't know there was going to be a test. It's okay. It's not about the set up in the face with my face. This is the story of useless pack and the three bears. Because <laughs> we're all grumpy this morning. Because <laughs> we're not in the woods completely on That's the trail. Right. It's a misleading backdrop, but this is all actually paint. <laughs> all right, so um, everyone says that if you don't know, if you're thinking about hiking or you're new to hiking, it's very important that you understand about the big three. Your pack, your sleep system, and your shelter. Those are the three things that are going to weigh the most or make the most impact with your experience. So uh, I was going to have Trey, <laughs> um, Red Baron. I would say of the big three, the one you seem to need to upgrade the most or want to upgrade the most would be your pack. Yes. <laughs> 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 Camera crew, you set that too close. <laughs> yep. All right. So, um, talk about your pack. What What did you hate about your pack, or what would you change? Why would you want to change it? Instantly, I would change the pack itself because that pack was over four pounds, close to five pounds, just for a pack. Now, I thought that was great, but it's from 25 years ago, and uh, it was a whole lot to carry. Yes, it puts the weight where you want it, and it's adjustable, and it's all that sweetness, and it's sturdy. Bomb proof, as everything bomb -proof. you know, as everything old was, it's not really bomb proof, but that's a phrase. And, um, but yeah, first off, I would toss that pack. Uh, I will be hanging that pack up on a wall somewhere Trying. as a reminder <laughs> of lessons learned. Uh, I would definitely go with something smaller like this. Um, this pack weighs in just over two pounds, um, it's a very heavy duty material. I was given this as a gift can't remember what it's called or where it came from, but it's military style. Looks like canvas. Yeah. Heavy, heavy duty canvas. Very heavy duty canvas. It's got the straps on the top. It's got your two pouches on the side. Um, it's got a few modification spots on it, but not that much. Again, for a one day hike in trip where you're only staying overnight, I really don't need that much gear. You know, I'm, I'm programmed for a survival. This was a hiking trip. And the two have to meet in the middle somewhere <laughs> for me to enjoy it. This is where Survivor Matt comes in. You know, he, he helped me a lot, cut down the gear, cut down the weight of it. That pack was 35 pounds, not including water and food. This, with just the essentials, 16.4 pounds without water. I do have all the food I would need for a full one day trip. So 16 pounds, 16.4 pounds with food. So yep. he's probably at a, a just under 15 pound base weight. So he literally more than cut it in half, about 55%. That's awesome. Yep. And it wasn't that hard. I cut down my pack before the trip, uh, I think three times, and it was still 35 pounds. I was totally happy with that. I thought that was great to be under 40 pounds. It took a lot of effort to cut down those three times. Cutting it down to this, simple. <laughs> it was he, quick and easy, man. He grabbed exactly what he needed for the trip, exactly. <laughs> well, see, now that I'm home, I use this, I use this, I use this. I didn't use any of this crap, you know? And I just pushed it all to the side, looked at what I had. Okay, this is what I did use. Now, is there anything over here that I would use? And I'm 100% on that? okay, these two things come back. But that was it. I went overboard. I went with a survival mentality, closer to a prepper style instead of a hiker style. You know, there's hiking, there's camping, there's survival, and then there's prepping. And I think that's the order they go in. Yeah, kind of. Well, we were just hiking and camping. A little bit of survival prep is okay, but no prepper mentality. You're just spending the night out there. Yeah, it's one night. It's just practice. Yeah. So, yeah, the big pack is definitely the first. Um, now, my shelter. I was number two, right? 
Well, it's, they don't go in any particular order, but yeah, pack, shelter, and sleep system. I have more coffee to remember what you said five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, pack, big, huge. Uh, shelter number two was, uh, I'm happy with the gear that I bring for my shelter. Um, I did not end up needing both sleeping bags. When I wrap my Mylar around me, my little survival blanket, when I wrap it around me and stuff myself into a mummy bag with all my clothing on, I was totally fine. You know, the fire died down at the end of the night, uh, you know, halfway through the night because the wind kicked up and the fire was gone, so I didn't have any warmth from that, but I did have enough in my little, you know, just my, my sleeping bag and my Mylar. Um, so I dropped the big sleeping bag that I was using for an underquilt. They make better underquilts that are just this little thin, downy, fluffy material that you just stretch underneath your hammock. Yep. All you need is a pocket of air. You don't need another insulating bag. Not for the temperatures we're dealing with. Um, it's still a cool idea. I'm glad you tried it. And I'm, I'm sure your viewers are going to appreciate it because I didn't, I would have thought to try it. Yep. I, I would have, uh, I should have taken the zipper at the bottom, unzipped it halfway, and pulled it down the hammock so that I could get it around me fully. That might have done a better job. Um, next time, if I do try something like that, I'm going to bring an extra strap, like the ones on this, that I can cinch down instead of the paracord to wrap, 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 wrap. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, but it was a great rigging that we that uh, Survivor Matt did for me. Um, it was a cool idea, and it was very comfortable inside those two sleeping bags in the hammock. But again, it's overkill for a hiking up a mountain trip to, <laughs> to just stay is. one night mountains that's right it was three mountain three mountains that we climbed <laughs> i'm still thawing out that finger yeah <laughs> um so yeah the shelter definitely mod i'm gonna modify the shelter um but it was I a good been, try I I, it was a good it was a I good idea it was a good effort. yeah it was a good idea uh we only learn through our failures so Come at me with failure. I am not afraid of it. Um, number three, the pack, the shelter. So, I'm sorry, I'm gonna let her do the sleep system. So tell oh, me about the sleep system. Okay. Tell me about the sleep system, honey. I, I was looking at the ducks in case you were saw my funny faces I was I making. Well, they were they were doing beep, 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 beep. sorry. Anyway, uh, so the sleep system are wow. We got a. <laughs> It was, it was awful. It was one of those that you uh, you um, just open it up, let the air in, and then you roll it down, and it pushes the air into the little pockets. Oh, sleeping pad. The, the yeah, ground we're talking pad. about sleeping pads. Okay, the ground pad. Gotcha. Oh, did I not use the right term? You didn't talk about. You just started talking. Oh, my bad. I, I'm not a morning person either, really. Okay. Anyway, so it was a it was a sleeping pad, and uh, that we had underneath our sleeping bags. And it has these little air pockets about this big. Um, and we rolled it up and rolled the end under and everything. And uh, by the time we got on it, they were already deflated. And it was only a couple of hours after we had rolled it up. And I did everything the way you're supposed to. And had it, it sealed underneath and everything. And it just somehow deflated. Which is funny because when I went to deflate it completely in the morning, there was a little tiny bit of air in it. I had to like roll it out to press it out. It took force to get it pressed out. So I, I don't know. This is, uh, I would definitely invest in something better. We were trying something less expensive and in a hurry for the. We trip, were trying so. a budget version versus, like, not gonna lie. So we we try to take a piece of Red Baron's uh, wheelhouse and and we're trying to find quality gear for a budget price. It's just I mean let's be real, money's tight, money's a thing. Um, and we bought, I think they were $25 air inflatable air mattresses that were for camping that shockingly enough, another YouTuber recommended. And, um, he said he used them for about four or five trips at the time of the video and everything was fine. And we couldn't even get them to function for a single evening. So... Um, there will be a video out for that coming up, right? Okay, yeah. there will be a video coming out for that. Don't recommend, you know, there's just certain spots you just don't cut, I guess, or maybe you research more. So, <laughs> so honey, how does it feel to sleep on the ground without an air pad? Not, not fun at, at all. Thankfully, we had the sleeping bag, so we weren't completely, completely on the ground, but 
all do you felt the ground the hardness and and ladies we have curves in different places so if you don't have the support there it's it's extremely uncomfortable the next day was pretty sore not to mention like um what there's three ways we lose heat as humans right conduction convection and um radiation radiation three there are ways. the three types of heat that you should be concerned with in the in nature those so, are the three types anyway because we were on the ground, we had no R value underneath us, just a sleeping bag, and which was zero degree, so we were losing heat to the ground, even though there was like the tent uh, bedpan or whatever it's called, and then there was the deflated air mattress, and then the sleeping bag, and then the clothes. I mean, we were still losing heat, and we could have slept more comfortably and warmer if we just had a decent dare i say sleeping pad i know so uh, do you need to buy the uh thermo rest neo air light 150 dollar air mattress she says yes i, I highly suggest it we, we are all about the buy once cry once when you can <laughs> i so yeah this <laughs> $150. Yes, I know, I know. It's $150. But is it better to spend $150 on something that's going to work or waste $20 or $30 on this and it not work? And then $30 on this one and it not work? Sending it back because it doesn't work, yes. Or is it better to make your own out of what you have available, not spend more than $10 and have it last just as long as you need it to? All right. Or the happy medium. <laughs> no, no, I, I got, okay, so devil's advocate here, so I guess that's why I'm in the middle. I am agreeing, like, we're buy once, cry once, right? I'd much rather save for a year, save for a year, save for eight months, and come up with $150 after eight months of saving and buy the Thermarest. But let's just say you're a hikerholic and you got to get out in those woods or you're going to perish like a Thanos snap. <laughs> then I have something else I recommend for you. So, on the Red Baron side of things, remember when you were a kid and you used to go swimming in the pool or the beach or something like that, and the parents would buy those cheap pillow inflatable air mattresses that you would swim on? They cost, sun like, they cost like $2. They cost like $2. Yeah. When they go on clearance, they go on sale for a quarter a piece. You can find them at the dollar store. You can buy find them, in them the at winter. Walmart. When yeah. the weather gets cold, Go by the pool section and pick up one of those little inflatable mattresses that you would use in a pool. And they come with a pillow. They come with a pillow. It's attached. It's, it's it right is there. cheap. It will cost you a little air. You don't have to put the work into it, but, yeah, but you spend a little more time. the work and not the money. <laughs> I'm actually working on a grocery bag bed mat, like floor mat. It's a, it's a crocheted mat out of grocery bags. You know, you get them at the grocery store. Once you're For done free. with them, people throw them away. Well, we, we save all of ours so we can reuse them. You know, recycle, reuse, repurpose. That's right. It's not the third one, but I it, it works. I but love yeah, it. You, you know, reuse, recycle. Um, so yeah, we're we're right now crocheting a blanket that I it's going to be as tall as I am, so maybe six feet, and about twice as wide as I am, so I can fold it in half. I've already got a good section of it. I can walk on that thing, and it's so comfy to walk on. I like that. Um, saw a... the idea on YouTube, and we're making a, a very cheap grocery bag, uh, you know, blanket. It can go inside my sleeping system. It can wrap around the outside, maybe. I don't know. But it's worth a shot, and it cost us nothing but the time to make it. So you've got buy once, cry once, legitimate philosophy. Do it yourself legitimate philosophy putting the two together in a combination that works for you it's the best that's, solution that's where you have fun you know make it work for yourself it's really about getting to the woods do whatever you got to do to get in the woods enjoy the outdoors with what time you have i was going to mention on the bag scene uh, i carried the cooler and had what 28 ish pounds i think what did i have in my bag it felt like 100 she had 18 before 18? she added stuff so I don't really know what she had. 25. <laughs> Sounds about I, right. I swear it was, in, it was in the 20s. Which is interesting because if you think about it, going grocery shopping and carrying a few bags, that's not that bad. It's like carrying like four bags of groceries in your hands, but it's on your back. 
25 pounds isn't a lot of weight, but when it's on your back and you're going uphill, downhill, across rocks, all that kind of stuff, it's 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 more than you like you think it really is until you do it. Because you hear people talk about it, and you're like, 25 pounds, that's a piece of cake. Come well, on, it's nothing. Yeah, a puppy dog weighs 25 pounds. Uh, you know? Uphill. <laughs> well, yeah. uphill. That was the killer. And uh, there's 25 pounds for 10 minutes. There's 25 pounds for four hours, right. five hours, eight yep. hours. And I don't have a lot of muscle on my shoulders. It's, there's the bones and stuff. So I think with extra padding, it would be better. I'm already looking into ways to adding a little bit of padding because I, what I did was I kept moving the straps from my neck out to my shoulders and back. And my shoulder bones, whatever these bones here are called, were sore for about four days after we got home. So just from the weight of, of that, just the 25 pounds, and it was even less coming back. Well, it was only 25 one way. It yeah. was less than well, that. Because we're back. like, eat yeah. everything, eat everything. Every ounce it counts. Water, so it, it really weight does. matters. And shoulder <laughs> straps, you want more cushy stuff for your shoulders. So it, it, it's worth it. Figure it out. Don't forget to like. And subscribe. And share it out. And, and click, click that, that bell. bell.